It's powerful to ask kids what problems they want to solve instead of what they want to be when they grow up. What problems do you want to solve? I think the world needs lots and lots and lots more problem solvers because I think as we've all seen, the world is racing ahead, but as it goes ahead, it's uncovering more and more potentially critical problems. But every one of those problems is gonna be solved by somebody that understands how to use new technologies as a tool, not a weapon, but a tool to take on these problems. So I think the most important innovation I could make is to create more innovators. And that's what FIRST does. How do you, Dean, define innovation? I define innovation as creating a solution to a problem that has never existed before. That is the definition of an innovation. To do it, you want to start with the best of what we do know. You want to start with the best solutions we have and then do things based on new technologies and new ideas that will create a solution to a problem that's better than anything we have today that can help humanity raise the bar so that every new generation will have bigger and better opportunities than the people before them. Why do kids make good innovators? Kids make good innovators because they are unconstrained. I also think kids make great innovators because inevitably when you try to innovate, most of the time you're going to fail because there's no roadmap. There's no way to get to the right answer because it's not in the back of the book because the only answers in the back of the book are the ones that we already solved. They're not innovations. Most kids don't mind trying things and failing. So I think kids are just more naturally ready to innovate. And as Albert Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. That says it all. Uh, tell us a story about a time when you failed at something. Were you embarrassed? I could tell you not only about the time I failed at something, I fail more often and more times at more things than anybody I know. But no, I'm rarely embarrassed, because if I were to be embarrassed by failing at things, I probably would avoid trying, because nobody wants to be embarrassed. I decided a long time ago, I'd rather try to do something really big and fail than do incremental things and succeed. How to prepare for the test. They'll tell you what the answers are going to be. They're in the back of the book. Hey, the questions that we know the answers to are boring. We already know. I want to ask the questions nobody's asked, look for the answers that nobody has. And when you try to do that, you sometimes fail. It's not how many times you fall down, as long as you stand up each time. Do you think well-rounded people make stronger innovators? I think well-rounded people clearly make better innovators, better citizens, better leaders, better everything. You want the skill sets of technology so that you can create solutions to problems, but you want to be well-rounded enough to know what problems are important to solve and how to deliver them to the world. How does FIRST encourage kids to be innovative problem solvers? The school is about giving you instant access to all that we know. It's School gives you the answers to all the questions that have already been solved. That's what a textbook has. The answers are in the back of the book. That's called analysis. Being innovative is answering the questions that haven't been answered yet. In fact, being innovative is asking the questions that haven't even been asked yet. Well, school is about analysis. First is about synthesis. First is about taking disparate ideas that you learned in math, in physics, all the science you've learned, all the mathematics you've learned, and putting them together in new and different ways. Build a robot to solve a problem nobody's ever solved before. Create a solution to a problem that hasn't been solved before. To teach kids that it's okay to try to do new things where the answer isn't in the back of the book, where there aren't quizzes and tests like you need in school. To give kids the opportunity to get together and have fun failing and have fun succeeding at doing new things that have never been done so they'll be in the next generation's textbooks, that's what FIRST is about. 
What advice do you have for teams that want to produce their project and keep going? How can they get help to do that? That's a very general question and a useful answer always turns out to be very specific. It depends on where you are in the phase of your project. Do you know any potential partners or sponsors? Uh, do you already have credibility or do you need to develop credibility? Because sometimes the bigger and more exciting and the bolder a project is, the more conservative and risk averse potential partners or sponsors are. I've spent my whole life trying to convince people that they should get involved in some big new solution to a big problem. The most important advice I give anybody that has a really big new idea is it's probably going to be hard to convince people to help. You better be prepared to fail a few times, but never, ever, ever give up on a good idea. If a kid at home wants to make a difference in their community and solve a problem, what advice do you have for them on how to get started? I would tell every kid, if you found a problem that you think isn't properly addressed today, whatever that problem is, if it's important to you, if you have a passion to get rid of that problem, and you're willing to try all sorts of different alternative ways to approach it compared to how we do today, and you're willing to try crazy ideas that probably will fail, or at least most of them will, I would say, just go do it. Think about them, figure out how to try them out, figure out to see whether they'd work, and just keep trying until one of them works. 